President Obama and Mitt Romney saying about the housing crisis? What, are, what specific plans are they giving us for reforming the tax code? Um, the answer to both those questions is kind of zero. It's, we're simply not hearing it. We should demand it, but we're not hearing it. And when I say we should demand it, I'm also implicating uh, those of us who yak on television for a living. Um, we should do much better than we do. We, we have uh, collective attention deficit disorder of the highest degree, and we're easily distracted by the latest charge and countercharge from this campaign or that campaign. Uh, it's a lot, frankly, easier than covering what's really happening in the country and what's really important to the country. So we should do better, and all of you should demand that we do better. <clears throat> Now, if you, if, you do, if you actually pay attention to what Democrats and Republicans are both saying, they agree uh, that there is going to have to be um, a fairly substantial and thoroughgoing reform of the tax code. President Obama talks about lowering corporate taxes, simplifying um, uh, individual taxes. Uh, uh, Governor Romney, talks about redoing the tax code and then he changes the subject, but, um, but there is a Republican plan out there. Um, again, a little bit light on specifics, but clearly the Ryan plan uh, anticipates major revisions to the tax code, as did the Simpson-Bowles Commission, as does anyone who looks at, at um, the revenue outgo balance of the federal government. The tax code needs to be reformed. Um, my belief is that whoever wins this time, and I, I, I actually have an idea who's going to win, but, but, that's, um, uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> but whoever does win, I, I do think that one of the things that's going to occupy Washington over the next four years, uh, or however long it takes, is, is one of these periodic, very serious attempts to look at, at our Byzantine tax code and make it make sense. Uh, that's going to be an enormous process, uh, and that's kind of where all of you come in, because influencing how the tax code gets rewritten uh, is um, it's laborious and tedious, and at times, frankly, as deadly boring as you could imagine, but it could not be more important because the tax code really is how we incentivize a lot of the kind of asset building that we're talking about. Um, so uh, d does, the, um, does the deduction for, um, for mortgage interest survive, uh, uh, thus a, a provision that has allowed so many millions of families uh, to, be, to uh, join the ranks of, of home ownership and build assets that way. Um, I think it probably does survive. It's a huge political winner, but if it survives, something else has got to go. Um, uh, do incentives that um, uh, for uh, tax deferred savings, are those uh, continued in the present form? Are they changed somewhat? What's the impact? overall on the ability of low and moderate income families to start climbing that ladder. Uh, what about education? The president talks a lot about Pell Grants, uh, and the fact is we need more than Pell Grants. We need more funds uh, to go toward education, uh, higher education, not only to be competitive globally, but uh, as an essential part of the, of the process of elevating families out of, out of poverty. It happened in my family, it happened in my wife's family, it happened, I'm sure, in many of your families. We have to make sure it can still happen. Um, it's all bound up in this sort of, uh, uh, not just the tax code, but a lot of it is in there. 
and, and I think that's going to be a hugely important project uh, over the next few years.